I'm standing in Bowman Street, the main street in the township at Ferrymead Heritage Park. Behind me runs the Ferrymead Tramway, built and operated by the Tramway Historical Society so that they can run their fine collection of preserved trams from throughout the South Island. In the 1880s, Christchurch was served by horse and steam trams. In the early 1900s, an electric tramway system was established and provided safe and reliable transport until buses took over in 1954. In Dunedin, things were similar, and it was here that New Zealand's first electric trams ran on an isolated system. Later, a city-wide system was established that ran until 1956. Dunedin also had a number of highly colourful cable car routes, and later still, a trolleybus system. Further south, the world's southernmost electric tramway ran in Invercargill. By the end of the 1960s, it had all gone and the buses had taken over. Within a few short years, the tracks had been ripped up, the old trams had been dismantled, their bodies sold as farm sheds, sleep outs, holiday homes and so on, and the mechanical bits sold as scrap. It would all have vanished without trace, were it not for a group of youthful enthusiasts who got together determined against all the odds that not all this heritage would be lost. 1960, the steam tram and the horse tram were in Bill Clapham Shard deteriorating fast with weather and vandalism. And I'd been talking to a little group about doing something, getting in, starting a society, essentially to try and arrest any further development on the horse tram and the steam tram. And the THS grew from that. Well, I called a meeting on the 6th of February 1961 in my parents' sitting room. Quite a lot of people came to it and I enthused about the need for the society and the, the good work we could do. They all looked at me and said, oh John, we agree with you. Yes, we're going to set up the society you're proposing and we're going to make you the first president. And um, it took me 50 years to sort of step back. Anyway, um, that same meeting, we passed a resolution that the first work party, the first THS work party, would be the following Saturday in Bill Clapham Shard. And we began our rescue work. That quickly developed into a plan to ask the Christchurch Transport Board if they'd let us take the horse tram and the steam tram back and store them on their premises. And as you know, the Transport Board agreed. And within about 18 months, two years, the horse tram was back in the tramway paint shop and Kitty was over in the little bus depot beside the big gas holder on the other side of Morehouse Avenue. And the society was slowly getting launched. But there was one event that would establish the society firmly in the public eye. And the next thing that happened was we got an approach from the Papua Nui Central Business Association. You've got a horse tram. We've got a mile of track. Why don't we do a deal? And we had to write back and say, well, yes, we do have a horse tram, but it's a bit run down and derelict. So we'd love to talk to you sometime, but we're not quite ready yet. And after another 12 months, they approached us again and we said, yes, we'd thought about it. We could run it at Papua Nui. Uh, and of course we did. They paid for the materials. Dulux sponsored the paint. And the restoration, if that's the word for it, was, was largely a Dulux restoration. But the horse tram operated very, very well. And the publicity made us known. Papua Nui Tram Week had put the society firmly on the map, but now it needed a home. At Ferrymead, it built a barn, but to build a tramway, they needed rail, which they obtained from an abandoned branch railway line at Blackpool on the west coast. They also needed overhead equipment, which they retrieved from a closed trolleybus system in New Plymouth. 
And of course, they needed something to restore. So if all the trams had been scrapped and scattered, what was there to restore? Um, we were helped very much by this piece of paper. And this was a record that was made by a gentleman called Alan Bellamy, an early member of the society, who in the 1950s, at the time when the trams were being scrapped, he would go into the workshops every few days and find out um, what had left as much as possible, where it had gone to and who had bought it. And he noted all this down and 10 years or more later, we got this information and that's what helped us scour the countryside to find all these old tram and trailer bodies. So right. that, that was all part of the adventure of the young, young guys today going yes. out in, in the country and finding stuff and talking to farmers, finding out, um, we understand there's a tram body somewhere near here. Um, it's not yours by any chance. No, no, it's not mine, but just down the road, I think if you go and see Farmer Brown down there, I think he, he, might, he might possibly have one. Um, they were in a, all sorts of conditions. They'd been out there for uh, 10 years or more. Some of them were quite well looked after. They had roofs put over them, but um, trams weren't designed to stay outside. And after a few years, the old canvas roofs and the wood would start to deteriorate. So in many cases, it wasn't so much the tram we were after, it was the parts that were on the tram because one of the things that did happen when the trams were being scrapped, often um, different things were left, left on different trams and one particular tram body that we got, the Duck House Trailer 115, still had its wheels on and the reason for that apparently was the contractor turned up, I want the tram, it's not quite ready yet sir, I need it now, okay, take it as is. That was the only one we ever found complete with wheels and what an exciting find that was. Well, and of course, as well as Christchurch, um, because at that time there were no other prospects of tram museums anywhere in the South Island, we uh, cast our net a little further and we looked for Dunedin and Invercargill trams. By the end of it all, we'd um, been all the way from the Bluff in the south um, to Blenheim in the north, and we'd found trams from Christchurch, Dunedin and Invercargill, and um, with lots of parts we brought back, and a number of trams, of course, and trailers, which now form the basis of our collection. The Society has an impressive stable of restored trams, not to mention cable cars, diesels and trolley buses. This is the horse tram that ran in Papua Nui Road all those years ago. Here we have the Kitson steam tram locomotive of which over 300 were built in England. Only three are known to survive, and ours is the only one in working order. It hauls two double-deck trailers restored by the Society. Electric tram number one, dating from the very beginning of electric operation in Christchurch in 1905. Double Decker number 26 is one of three built in America for Christchurch and in use on opening day in 1905. Needham Tram number 22, one of 14 so-called California cars. Many of the Society's trams now run on the city tramway. Here is Christchurch number 152, one of 28 similar cars built by the local firm of Boone and Company. Number 178 was one of a fleet of 25 cars that became known as one-man trams after conversion for one-person operation. Dunedin boxcar number 11 was one of 14 built in America in 1903. And Invercargill tram number 15. Over 6,000 of these off-the-shelf so-called Bernie safety cars were built in America. And of course we have a fleet of diesel and trolley buses as well. So this is Hills Car 24, it's the um, current um, main volunteer restoration project that's underway in the society. Uh, the Hills Car is a second series Hills Car, um, went into service in about 1920, uh, finished on virtually the last day of service in 1954, and then was, went West Ayrton, used as a hay shed and a Sunday school at one stage, not necessarily in that order. Uh, we've brought it back here in 1968 and it has basically been waiting restorations since that time. 
started uh, dismantling it um, in about before, just before the earthquakes, and um, subsequent to the earthquakes, af after another couple of projects were done, we started on the restoration work. So to date, we have um, taken the chassis and so forth out, completely disassembled it, um, cleaned it up, put it back together again, and now we're rebuilding the body on top of it. In the far corner of the tram barn is the roof. We've got a whole lot of wooden components and so forth that need to be um, cleaned up. Uh, we've got some new trucks that are being built up to go underneath it, and that's also a work in progress, plus all the electrical gear, including the controllers, which needs to be, which need to be restored. The main project at the moment is basically getting the the uprights, the pillars done, and then the roof on, but there are lots of f internal fittings and so forth that need to be cleaned up. A lot of pieces of woodwork and so forth can be cleaned up, and that stuff can be done independently, given to a, someone who's got a bit of spare time. They can work on it, get it ready, and then in the fullness of time, we can attach it back to the tram. And the restoration program is not finished yet. We have lots more to restore. The society has a wide range of activities for its members. There's carpentry, metalwork, painting, electrical work, overhead track work, and of course driving and conducting. And it's not all work and no play. The society has monthly social gatherings with interesting speakers, always followed by a scrumptious supper, and there are outings and dinners and so on. The, the Tramway Society has been operating out of this site for just under 50 years now, and it's made up of various people from all walks of life and we're always welcoming new members so if you've got an interest in restoration or trams or driving come along and make yourself known. Now many of our members have no special interest in trams but just enjoy the companionship and the opportunity to practice their skills. If you'd like to know more about the society or if you'd like to join either as a worker or just as a supporter here are some contact details.